Hi everyone I welcome you all for this nursing system channel Today we are going to see about vasa previa Introduction Vasa previa is an obstetrical emergency condition involving unprotected fetal blood vessels that cross over the opening of the cervix That means normally the umbilical cord covered and protected with cotton jelly cotton jelly is gelatinous substance insulate and protect umbilical cord in the womb Here you can see the normal umbilical cord but in vasa previa the blood vessels are not protected with cotton jelly so it is easily prone to rupture so if this blood vessels present in front of presenting port easily rupture and cause fetal blood loss the word vasa previa meaning vasa previa word derived from latin word vasa means vessels pre means before via means way in other words vessels lie before the fetus in the birth canal vasa previa definition vasa previa is the term used when fetal blood vessel lies over the internal os of the cervix in front of the presenting port incidence of vasa previa the incidence rate is rare one is 2500 to 5000 pregnancy higher rate in twin pregnancy rare but very serious cause of vaginal bleeding fetal mortality rate may approach 60 percentage if vasa previa is not diagnosed before birth however when the condition is detected in pregnancy the chances of survival for the fetus can rise to 97 percentage risk factors of vasa previa velamentous insertion of umbilical cord succinct ureate placenta bilobed placenta multilobed placenta ivf that means in vitro fertilization placenta previa multiple pregnancy previous uterine surgery cesarean delivery smoking pregnancy in later life chronic health condition such as diabetes velamentous cord insertion Normally the umbilical cord inserted in the center of the placenta in velamentous cord insertion the umbilical cord inserts into the amniotic sac instead of the placenta when the blood vessel run through the amniotic sac they don't have that protection if the blood vessels in the amniotic sac or above the cervix it causes vasa previa bilobed multilobed and succinct ureate placenta a bilobed multilobed or succinct ureate placenta can occur if the placenta implants in one of the following places ovary of fibroid in uterus area of decreased blood supply area of previous surgery over the cervix bilobed placenta placenta can form two lobes which is called a bilobed placenta multilobed placenta rarely it can form more than two lobes which is called multilobed placenta succinct ureate placenta succinct ureate placenta refers to a smaller accessory placenta lobe that is separate to the main disc of the placenta vasa previa happens if the blood vessels that run between these lobes end up lying against the cervix IVF is in vitro fertilization in this case there are the chances of abnormal placentation or the abnormal attachment of placenta that may leads to vasa previa placenta previa is low lying placenta that's why it is increase the risk of vasa previa multiple pregnancy twins or triplets pregnancy there is no adequate space for the placenta to attach so there is chance to attach in lower uterine segment and increase the risk of vasa previa pathophysiology of vasa previa due to risk factors that includes velamentous cord insertion bilobed multilobed placenta placenta succinct ureata in vitro fertilization multiple pregnancy placenta previa these risk factors may cause unprotected blood vessels to lie over the cervix in front of the presenting port when the labor starts and membrane rupture the blood vessels also get rupture that leads to painless vaginal bleeding 
fetal exsanguination that means fetal blood loss excessive blood loss from fetus will cause fetal distress and fetal death signs and symptoms there are often no symptoms associated with vasa previa until labor starts after membrane rupture women have painless vaginal bleeding that is dark in color because baby's blood doesn't have as much oxygen in it so it appears darker fetal distress because fetal blood vessels are broken fetal blood vessels only carry blood to fetus so if blood vessels are broken fetus going to lose the blood so fetus is going to distress after that changes in fetal heart rate may cause bradycardia or tachycardia classic triad of vasa previa that includes rupture of membrane painless vaginal bleeding fetal distress and fetal death when labor starts fetal membrane will get rupture after that fetal vessels that present in front of presenting port also will get rupture that will cause painless vaginal bleeding the blood belongs to fetus so the mother will not have any pain this excessive blood loss of fetus will cause fetal distress and fetal death diagnosis ultrasound doctors may suspect vasa previa based on ultrasounds done at port of routine prenatal care transvaginal ultrasound if doctor suspect vasa previa after doing ultrasound then will do transvaginal ultrasound which is done with a wand inserted into the vagina to verify it color doppler doctors also do color doppler mapping test to confirm where the blood vessels are per vaginal examination when the membranes are intact we can feel the pulsation speculum examination blood vessels can be visualized after membrane rupture will find painless vaginal bleeding then fetal distress and fetal bradycardia vasa previa management if diagnosed in antenatal period that means vasa previa diagnosed before labor monitored and have a c section there is a 97% chance that baby will be fine the goal of treatment for vasa previa is to safely prolong pregnancy but deliver baby early enough to avoid rupturing the blood vessels monitoring baby with a non stress test twice a week starting between 28 and 32 weeks mother may be admitted to the hospital between 30 to 32 weeks to more closely monitor the baby mother may be given a shot of corticosteroids to help baby's lung mature pelvic rest may be advised which means avoiding sex or putting anything in vagina planned c section delivery between 34 and 37 weeks mother may need to emergency c section if membrane rupture early or have vaginal bleeding or baby is in distress if not diagnosed in antenatal period that is treated as an obstetric emergency the midwife should call for urgent medical assistance the fetal heart rate should be monitored via ctg if the mother is in first stage of labor and the fetus is still alive an emergency c section is carried out if mother is in second stage of labor the birth should be expedited such that the baby may be born vaginally c section may be carried out but the mode of birth will be dependent on parity and fetal condition there is a high fetal mortality associated with the emergency and a pediatrician should be present for the birth if the baby is born in poor condition resuscitation urgent hemoglobin estimation and a blood transfusion with o negative blood may be necessary complication of vasa previa fetal or neonatal hemorrhage may occur fetal mortality stillbirth brain damage vaginal delivery can pinch the blood vessels which cut off the blood flow to the baby this can cause brain damage i hope you will be find this video useful thanks for watching